Hey friends, it's Kip Icon, and welcome back to Kip Plays Kentucky Route Zero. Um, I know that I've taken a little bit of a hiatus from the channel because I, uh, as some of you may know from my Tumblr and my Twitter, I moved recently. So I'm in a new place, and that was, of course, an ordeal, and it was my birthday. Um, so celebrated a little bit, but I am back. I've missed you guys so much. Oh my gosh, it is so good to be back. And I've missed the world of Kentucky Route Zero, certainly. I know I've already played this act, but, you know, I miss this world, and I miss these characters and these locations, and I definitely miss sharing it with, uh, you friends. There's a house. The flayed hull of a country home smolders in the night. Parts of the property are obscured by smoke. Hmm. So it burned down, eh? What are we looking for? Notes. Forest. You have to follow the Green River way out east and then hop over Lake Cumberland. Lake Cumberland. That sounds familiar. Wasn't he in Doctor Strange? Alright, that was a bad one. But, you know, as, as you all know, not all of my jokes can be winners. We're definitely going to follow the lake, but I want to see what else there is to see, certainly. Bait shop. Hey, we've been there before. All right, so this is a map we've we've been to. This is the map. A large dirt parking lot surrounds the bait shop. A sign is vaulted above the roll uh, above the road on a thin steel bar. Let's see if we can discover anything new from the places we've already been to on the map. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on this, I believe that the street names and the names of rivers and stuff are essentially the same, or, or, or you know, this map was based on a real map, and I believe that all the names are unchanged. I was kind of exploring the outskirts here to see if there's anything hidden, because I am Kip Icon Secret Hunter through and through. This part is so beautiful. I just... You can totally see this in your mind's eye. You can imagine this happening. And I love it. I love it too that we're flying on the wings of this huge bird in the darkness. Remember, this, this is all taking place in the evening or maybe even at night. I remember uh, I used to go to... When I, when I used to live in Florida, when I very first moved to Florida, I should say, because I stopped going to the beach eventually, which, what a shame, right? I was like, I can go to the beach anytime, and I just never went back. But uh, me and my friends uh, that worked for a theater company, we were interns. We would go to the beach um, after the shows would let out at, like, midnight and, you know, bring a, <laughs> bring a bottle of wine with us. And I remember standing on the beach at night and listening to the waves crashing against the shore in the darkness. And I just, you really get a sense of how endless the ocean is at night specifically. It's just darkness as far as you can see. Let's check out this chapel. See, I knew we'd find something. A chapel and graveyard disconnected from any road in the middle of a dark wood. Occasionally it seems that pale, glowing figures, difficult to track with the eye, appear. Sometimes they roll huge barrels in or out of the building. Sometimes they just loiter for a moment, then fade out of view. Pale, glowing figures, difficult to track with the eye, huh? Sounds like maybe the, uh, fellas from Hard Times. I know that we are going to see them in Act 3, and I am excited and terrified. <laughs> and those of you who have been with me for that, uh, for that journey know what I'm talking about. So I am... I think I'm just backtracking at this point. It's hard to get your bearings with this kind of, like, 
uh, uh, circular, rotating... I mean, of course, I can see that the cardinal directions are down there in the left-hand corner. All right, well, let's just... Let's do what it wants us to do, shall we? By the way, still, nobody has uh, let me know what that comet is about. What in the world was that about? Why is it that in my playthrough of this game, up until at least the end of Act 3, it's never mentioned? Is it mentioned in Act 4, or... Or is it just supposed to be deliberately esoteric and strange and... Forgettable, or... I don't know, man. I don't know. Hey, small figure! A tiny gray figure walks along the side of the road, carrying what appears to be a guitar case. He is followed closely by a smaller shape, a dog. Let's see, a tiny gray figure walks along the side of the road. Is that Johnny? He suddenly winks out of view, perhaps into the woods. Maybe that's not a specific character, but just a little snapshot of... Snapshot of, uh... Just, you know, things you see while you are riding a huge bird through the air at night. From above, the huge swaying tipple, tipple? Looks like a small wooden lattice framing the edge of the mine entrance. I don't know what a tipple is. If only I had some sort of invention made of plastic and glass that could connect me to some sort of internet to find out the answer to my question. Oh well, maybe in the future. A shadowy figure drags itself out of the lake, stuffs its limbs into a smart blue suit, then trudges slackly out of view? What the heck? What were you doing in the lake? Was that a zombie? Is this a scary part? Alright, I know I need to keep following the river up that way, but... Um, oh no, that's where I came from. That's where I came from, just kidding. I think, though, that this is taking us to a place off of the map that we couldn't previously access. Can we see the artificial limb factory from up here? Gosh, there's just... Well, how about this? My dear, dear friend Rec told me not to get too hung up on finding all of the secrets. To just let myself experience the game. And I think that's what I'm going to do. But hey, we found a swamp. From a distance, from the air, it first looks like a swamp. Vines have grown over the street lamps. Flower bushes obscure the streets. A few of the houses have slipped partially into the ground, foundations cracked by underground roots. This is a truly nightmarish world where debt has just ruined everything. Lake Cumberland, that's where we're trying to go, right? Wait, hold on. What did it say? I already forgot. Uh, follow the Green River way at east and then hop over Lake Cumberland. Okay. All right, we're on the right path. Oh, that looks like exactly where we need to go over there. So I'm just going to check out what's over here real fast. Wasn't there a previous episode where I said I wasn't going to try to explore the map too thoroughly and then we ended up finding that comet scene? I'm still mind blown that <laughs> that I totally missed that in my first playthrough. Yeah, that definitely looks like where we need to go, doesn't it? Oh, I can't even click out here, so I think that this is the extent of the map. Okay, all right. Well, we are gonna go ahead and jump right into the next scene. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful scene, and I cannot wait to share it with you. Act 2, Scene 6, A Forest.
And if you notice, we are controlling Ezra this go round instead of Conway and Shannon. Now, this is one of the most impactful scenes for me. Look at this! It's okay, just take it easy. Oh my gosh, I love this song too. We've got to get back on the road. We will, but we need to get this leg looked at first. Right now, you're in no condition to haul anything out of that truck, even when we do find Dogwood Drive. Why is... Why is this delivery so important to you? It's my last delivery. Oh, you're retiring or something? Or... or sorry. Hmm... These are both good choices. I'm gonna stick and keep- I'm gonna keep it personal, though. I'm just not as tough as I used to be. Well, just rest up for a minute. I bet you're still plenty tough. Oh, 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 oh! Don't forget Homer! How'd you come to be with these people? I bet you are pretty wild when you were younger. When I'm old like you, I'll still be wild. Yeah, you will, Ezra. Yeah, you will. Look at that. I just pointed at the screen as if you could see where I was pointing. Oh, we see the, the, uh, oh, 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 this is the same weird dwelling that we saw in the Museum of Dwellings, isn't it? Oh, are those the bed quilt ramblers? Look at those musician friends. Shouldn't be much farther now. I think I see where the settlement ends over there. This forest is full of shadows. The moonlight helps. Closer to the cities, you don't get moonlight like this. It all gets washed out. Light pollution, you know? I guess it's still there. You just can't see it. How are you feeling? I'm just thinking about getting back to work. We're almost there. We'll get you patched up and back in that truck. We can handle this. Oh, oh, oh. More with Homer? Anytime I get a chance to talk to Homer, I love it. Have you ever been over to the lake? Ooh, it's really deep is a good choice, but I think I'm going to keep it personal here. I went there once with my folks. I got in trouble for swimming too far. I think the idea of bodies of water at night is really beautiful to me. Swimming too far in the lake, gosh, that's scary. Especially for parents. Do you have any family you're close with? Brother or sister, kids? Just Lizette's family, I guess. Oh yeah? Husband? Bunch of kids? Hmm. Hmm. These are all good choices. Her husband, Ira, and I were friends. She had this great kid named Charlie, but... Well, I guess it's just her, me and her now. That tells us so much just with these choices. Uh, let's talk about Charlie for a sec. Oh, they're not gonna talk about it. Sorry. I guess I was always closest with Weaver. As close as someone can be with a girl like that. She was always on her own wavelength, but we were the same age growing up and everyone else was so busy. When she disappeared, I got pretty angry and I guess I just stayed that way. I never really understood her, but I knew her. It's lonely without someone like that around. Ooh. Sorry, I'm... You're a good listener. Oh, 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 Homer, Homer. Mmm. Aww. You have a way of falling behind, don't you? Don't be sad about it. They always wait for you. Mmm. 
Is it possible to fall in love with a video game dog who never says anything? Because... Oh look, there's a little doghouse over there! Ugh, I could listen to this song forever. I frequently do listen to this song, actually. <laughs> look at this house. This is nice. He's inside... Oh, we get some choices here. He's inside with Dr. Truman. Are you coming in? Sure, I'll come in. Dr. Truman lets me watch TV sometimes. My folks never watch TV, but I like the way it looks. You said you lost uh, uh you said you lost track of your family earlier? Yep, it's easy to get lost, especially out in the woods like this. I never really get lost though. I just look out for Julian. He's always around. My folks had a really nice house, bigger than any of these houses, but it made them worried all the time. Then the bank took it back. We had to sleep at the bus station, but I could never get to sleep, so I just went out to fly around every night with Julian. We flew really far, and we never got lost, but when we came back in the morning, they were all gone. They just left you? I don't think so. All our stuff was still there. Maybe they got lost somewhere. Ooh. Or maybe the, the, the folks from hard times came to make them repay their debt. Let's go see what's on TV. Mm. And friends, we're going to make this a long episode. We're just going to play through the end of the act. So here we go. We're in Dr. Truman's house. Isn't this gorgeous? I still get goosebumps whenever I see this reveal. This is Dr. Truman. His character design is really rad. I like him a lot. And yeah, I think during that exit interview is when I really internalized, or when I really realized how badly they had me. But how else can you pay for medical school? I have college friends with debts that you can't expect to pay that back unless you're planning to sell painkillers on the side or something, or, you know, some kind of administrative thing. I don't know. Having seen what uh, having seen what arthritis did to my grandmother and my best friend in high school destroy his wrists building synthesizers. I mean, he was like 17. Ailments of the joints and limbs just seem important to me. I hope that answers your question. Getting a scholarship with that pharmaceutical company had a lot of strings attached, but at least I have somewhere to practice, even if I have to follow their market trends a bit. And hey, thanks to all those seminars, I'm an expert on the medical uses of Neuripinol TM. It's not so bad. So how about that leg? What happened exactly? Ooh. Dang, I think I chose my leg was crushed by falling rocks before. It was too dark to tell, really, is kind of a bland answer, but I like... It was like something grabbed my leg in the dark. Grabbed? Like an, an animal? Or, or a piece of machinery? Hmm. That could be ugly. I've seen some joints twisted right out of... Never mind. <laughs> Ouch, that made my knee hurt. Just reading through that. Well, let's start the examination. Mm. Love this scene. Oh? That song sounds a little bit familiar. What are they singing about? Hmm. They're certainly singing about hard times, that's the truth. Um. They're singing about going home. Yeah, they're singing about their home because they're lost right now. It's a scary song. It's scary, but they can still sing about it. Your friend's in pretty bad shape, isn't he? It's interesting that this version of this song is so much faster, and if you listen to them singing, it sounds more rote. It doesn't sound as expressive. It's almost like this is the version of the song that they had to produce to be a single or to have this TV appearance, you know? Like, I wonder what debt they're paying off. Gosh, I love this kitchen here. But it's nothing we can't handle. You might have a few things to look out for in the future. Be a bit gentler with the leg or the way you walk, but you'll be okay. 
I've dealt with similar cases before. So, the anesthetic we'll use is called Neuripnol TM. It's pretty experimental, but it's more appropriate in cases like yours. The way it works is, I'll count backwards from five to start the process, and then we'll just have a normal conversation as the Neuripinol TM takes effect. Then, I'll get started. Ooh, this is one of my favorite parts of this act, friends. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. So let's talk about billing for a moment. The pharmaceutical company I'm contracted with was recently acquired by an energy company that has some different standards for billing and revenue, so it's a bit complex now. Is it? Ooh. Makes my stomach turn a little bit. Thinking about <laughs> the payment plan and also thinking about this, like, twisting, morphing deconstruction of this place as this good old Neuripinol TM takes effect. That's it! <laughs> End of Act 2! We made it through Act 2, friends. Sorry it was a long time coming. I am super stoked to be back here with you. Super stoked to be back playing this game. Don't tell me it's going to automatically start Act 3. Okay, we can't do that. I'm not going to do that. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. It, it automatically dumped us into Act 3. Uh, and, and really, I think that as you're playing this, I think it's a great idea to take a little break between acts. I mean, it's much like seeing a show in a theater, you know. Intermission exists for a reason. You, you need a little breather, I think. And uh, we're going to take a little breather. And whenever we come back, we're going to start Act 3. Actually... We're not going to start Act 3 yet because we're going to play the second interlude of Kentucky Route Zero. It's a free interlude that you can download from the internet machine called The Entertainment. So just like we did limits and demonstrations after Act 1 and before Act 2, we're going to take a look at The Entertainment before Act 3. So keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for more Butterfly Soup and... There's a new series that I'm going to be starting on the channel uh, to commemorate my move and to commemorate having my own recording space that I can make my own schedule for. So expect more frequent up, uh, uploads and expect uh, daily content, friends. Anyway, thanks for watching. Ah. How is this? How about this? Life imitating art. Gosh dang, I got a huge cramp in my leg just then. Ooga. Anyway, I'm going to eat a banana. I'm going to stretch out my leg. Thanks for watching. I have been and I will continue to be Kip Icon as long as you guys continue to what? Follow your drams. Bye.